Correct. One, two. Got it. Good morning. I'd like to call the school board meeting to order at 1130 in the morning on June 29th, 2021. Can we do a roll call vote for school board, I mean, school committee members, please? Lisa Brown, present. Becky Turnia, present. Monique Salvis, present. Heather Morin, present. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment or communications that we want to open up to? And if so, you can raise your hand or let Mr. Vera, uh, Dr. Vera know. I do not see any hands up. Okay, so we're going to go down to the consent agenda and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Vera, please. This is still morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm used to saying good evening, but good morning, everyone, and welcome to the school committee meeting. I want to uh, talk a little bit about our process to find a new director of special education. Process started about a month, six weeks ago, um, where we had a screening committee go through the applications, um, and we interviewed six candidates. Uh, from there, we had three finalists forwarded to me. We had the opportunity to meet with the finalists, and I met with all three finalists, and we opened it up to a community forum and a staff forum where we got some feedback from the community and from um, staff in regards to our finalists. Thrilled to say that Tara has emerged as, as a clear number one in, in, this, in this process. Just a little bit about Tara before turning, turning it over. Um, she started her career as a special education teacher in Grafton. Um, she went on to the Worcester Public Schools as a team chairperson, and currently she is at a middle school in Marlboro as an educational team leader, which is kind of a unique position. So in that role, she oversees the special education programming and curriculum development, and that was really appealing to me, knowing that we have so many successful programs with our flex and our language-based program. So the ability that experience that she has in overseeing program and curriculum development was so important. Um, she works collaboratively with building-based and district-wide administrators to support students and staff. One thing that's been phenomenal about our special education department and the um, Office of Student Support Services is that partnership between the office and students, the office and teachers, and the office and, and families. And Tara has that ability and that skill set and that experience in working collaboratively with all those groups. Um, she currently in a role supervises and evaluates staff, and that, that's a big piece of, of the job. Uh, she facilitates team meetings, um, which is part of the role of special education director, but she knows that role. And the other thing that she does, which is critically important, is she manages compliance in her building. Um, our, as you know, our audits have been clean. Um, we're in compliance with things, and having someone who has the experience in knowing how to be compliant, what it takes to be compliant, and how to oversee that was critically important to me in looking for our next director of special education. And Tara had that skill set um, as um, a role as an educational team leader. So all those things brought us to this point today. So I'm going to turn it over to Tara so she can give us a little overview for what I didn't cover about herself, her values, her beliefs. Um, for those of you who may not have heard it when she did um, her community forum, but also maybe for some other people who are here and um, are listening. So Tara, I'll turn it over to you. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm very much looking forward uh, to the opportunity of becoming part of the Douglas team. Um, just to elaborate a little bit on my current position as an education team leader, um, it's a building-based special education administrator position. Um, so what interested me in pursuing the director of special education position in Douglas um, was honestly the size of the district in relation to the size of the building that I'm currently in. So in my current position during my time there, enrollment has fluctuated between 12 to 1500 students. So while I'm, yes, I monitor compliance um, and I do a lot of the office pieces, I also am very fortunate to have the experience um, and the opportunities to be in the classrooms and working directly with educators and having direct contact with parents. And when I'm thinking of taking next steps in my career and wanting to go from the building level to the district level, that was something that was really important for me um, 
to look for so that I'm not so far removed from the building level that you lose that sense of team. Um, I know some of you were there when I interviewed at least once, um, so you've heard me say it, but um, just for transparency, I am someone who believes every student is capable of making progress with the right supports and services, and I just operate under the belief that my support of faculty and staff supports students. Um, so after meeting with um, some of the educators in the district, special educators, general educators, meeting with members of the leadership team, um, and getting some um, input and feedback from community members. I do feel like Douglas is a great fit for my leadership style um, and my values and my beliefs. So very much looking forward to becoming part of the team and I'm happy to elaborate on anything or answer any questions that you have. Turn it over to members of the school committee who may have questions, comments, but Tara. Um, I'll start. Um, I did see your community interview or whatever you'd want to make, <laughs> see what that was. And I do think you're a great fit. Um, I do, one thing that did come up a few times was the co-teaching model. And um, since that's going to be so important, since we did decrease the amount of paras that we have for next year, I was just wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit on what your take is and how comfortable you are with that. Sure, yep. Um, so my experience teaching was in the role of a co-teacher, so um, I'm pretty confident in the different models of co-teaching. I think what will be most important for me is to um, get to know the teams and the educators. Um, the teaming is the most important part of co-teaching, so um, I think it's important for me to have a good understanding of what the baseline is before there's any um, action planning, um, but feeling very confident in addressing that. Hi, Tara. I saw your community interview as well. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about how you feel your role relates to addressing the needs of students um, who are very high functioning and students who have a lot of learning challenges and sort of how do you navigate the wide variety of um, students that fall under student support services? Sure. Um, so when I think of a continuum of services in the public school setting, I think of everything from tier one, what we're doing for everyone, to our most significantly involved who might be in substantially separate settings. Um, so I do have experience with that, with providing um, support and oversight for intervention services all the way up through specialized programming. Um, again, I think it's important to get the baseline and know your student population. Um, but I will say I am someone who truly believes in the least restrictive environment and making sure students even significantly involved are as included as possible, which can be done. And I think that's one of the um, investments in co-teaching where you see some of that payoff. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Um, hi, Tara. It's nice to see you again. Um, I was just kind of wondering if maybe you could kind of just kind of give like your top three things that you consider when um, like sort of along the lines of the last two questions, um, blending a special education program with the general ed um, population. Sort of like what do you think are like the top three things maybe to consider or to keep in mind to make that work beautifully and like flawlessly so that every kid in the, in each classroom um, is able to have the room to reach their full potential. Yeah, absolutely. So if we're talking about in a co teaching model. Um, I think clear expectations from the teachers. Um, I know in one of the interviews I spoke about this of just acknowledging that both educators are professionals and are bringing different expertise, whether it's content or as the strategist, um, but just that they're both bringing expertise. And there are different co-teaching models. It doesn't always have to be team teaching and it doesn't always have to be one leading and one supporting, where you can really differentiate and find, okay, here is the curriculum standard we're working on and where's the entry point for all of the students and when you pair educators um, 
who one is a content expert and can find this is the grade level standard and this is how I typically teach it with the strategist who says great but the entry level is down here um, then you differentiate um, learning experiences from there so you could have students in the same class working on different things still addressing the same standards at their own levels thank you sure. I have another one um, I'm wondering what you anticipate are going to be your biggest challenges switching into this role and into our district specifically. So I think getting to know a new team, I'm, you know, I've talked about this. I, I value those relationships. So um, I think it'll take a little bit to get to know the buildings and the cultures um, and just um, what models and programs are currently in place. So I'm looking forward to that. I think um, I think a lot of the things I do now because of the size of my building are transferable, but there is definitely a different population here than um, what I am used to. So I think just really getting to know what that looks like day in, day out from arrival to dismissal will be the most important. Thanks. And I have, I have another one if nobody else wants to jump in yet. <laughs> um, so I know as an admin, I feel like often, you know, your primary role is to work with the staff. But I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about in your, uh, your career to this point, how do you engage the students themselves? How do you engage the families? Do you see that role changing? If you're in this position, if you could speak to that. Sure. So I, I do know that um, that role will change a little bit with this position where I won't be in the same building every day, um, but I do enjoy seeing the students every day. Um, a lot of the students who are participating in my current programs um, know me, will stop by my office. Um, students who are on point systems come in to get you know, to trade in, get rewards, things like that. Um, so I'm still very much used to students coming in to see me, knowing me by name, um, things like that. So I do like that student involvement. I hope I still have the opportunity to have some of that, but I do know that that is going to change. But I think students know when they, when you know that they can be successful and that's your expectation for them and going back to even you know teaching in my own classroom that was always my strategy you're going to be successful and i'm going to set the bar hard high for you but you're going to reach it um, and that kind of builds the relationship from there great thank you thanks becky <coughs> I just have one more. Um, so in terms of like teachers who are um, working in the classroom, they have different level learners. Um, if they're looking maybe for some ideas or some thoughts as to how to um, uh, improve upon the, um, the work that they're doing, like trying to reach every kid, um, how do you see that teacher reaching out for support, um, you know, to yourself or to other team members? Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so in my current position, we have some of that. So I developed professional learning communities so that they could have time with each other. So they'll talk about a strategy, um, decide how they're going to implement it, go off to their respective classrooms, implement it, come back to the next one and talk about how things kind of went. Um, I've had educators reach out and have gone through every step possible to support them all the way up to like modeling in the classroom and especially for co-teaching peers, um, like giving them the feedback. Um, but I've found that it's most productive um, and I think they feel the most comfortable when it's their colleagues that are doing it. So if it's a co-teaching team observing another co-teaching team and they meet afterwards and collaborate about what went well, what didn't go well, what would they have done differently if it was their team, what would they do differently if they were to repeat the lesson again. Um, I think a part of that goes back to being a collaborative leader though. When, you know, staff acknowledge that you're not big, bad, and scary, that you're there to support them. Um, staff definitely reach out when they know that. Thank you.
So I'll jump in, Tara. I, I've been on, participating in a couple of your interview process, so it's good. But how would you measure a success coming to Douglas with working within your department? How would you evaluate what your success would be after a year? Great question. Um, so I think I would really want to get to know all of the players um, and make a plan for myself um, of what success would look like. For me, for the first year, it will definitely be building those relationships, um, maintaining the compliance piece. Um, you guys do have a great record with it. I definitely looked that up when I was coming into interviews, so obviously keeping things like that going. Um, I recognize that there are a lot of strengths within the department already. Um, I am someone who thinks there's no such thing as perfect and things can continually get better, so that would be what I would be looking for um, but definitely building the relationships and just knowing what the baseline is thank so, you sure. as people as, some people may you know, go ahead i'm sorry no, no, I was just seeing if anyone else from the school committee had any more questions to ask of Tara. So as people may know, there are four appointments that are usually done by the school committee. It's the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, the special education director, and the business um, and finance director. So this is the school committee appointment. So this is the last piece of this this process um we will need a, a motion to a point then from there um after this meeting um if things work out well i will sit with tara and uh, look at some contract language and some start dates and things from there and i'll forward to um the chair the vice chair a copy of the contract for you to look at before i send it over to tara so those are the, the next steps in in the process so I'll be looking some up for a motion from somebody from the school committee to appoint the director of special education, Tara Slablinski. I'm sorry if I slaughtered your last name. <laughs> so Valeski, yep. <laughs> so moved. I need a second. Thank you. So uh, motion made by Lisa, seconded by Monique, was it? Yes. Just want to make sure. And now I need a roll call vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Cherniak, aye. Monique Salvas, aye. Julie Moldry. Heather Moore, and aye. Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome aboard, Tara, hopefully. Okay, okay, Tara. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. So we can adjourn the meeting. Mrs. Sousa, if you could, after we adjourn, stop the um, recording, and then uh, I'll stay on with Tara and talk about some next steps, and I'll forward to you, Heather, and to Becky, a sample of the contract. All right? Great. Sounds thank good. You. I'll be, thank you again, Tara. Welcome aboard. Um, I'll be you. looking for a motion to adjourn the school committee meeting at 1148. So moved. Second. Motion made by Lisa, seconded by Monique. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 I roll call vote. Roll call, roll call vote. Yeah. Roll, roll, roll call, sorry. Roll call Lisa, vote, please. Lisa Brown, aye. Becky Charniak, aye. Julie Mulder, aye. Heather Monique. Moore, and I. Oops, sorry. Elvis, aye. Are we doing alphabetical order? I've kind of found that trend. Okay. It seems to be the trend. It just seems yes. easier. Okay, and I apologize. My I'm I'm stuck on my phone today. The computers aren't working, so like my phone went flying. Very unprofessional. I apologize, Tara. But welcome aboard. It'll be nice to see you in person sometime. Welcome, Tara. Thank you. All right, and then Thank we have everyone. our next school committee meeting. For those of you who are watching on um, Wednesday, July twenty first, that'll be all. That'll be via Zoom at seven o'clock. All right. Okay. Thank Anna, you. Can Thank you. you. Happy fourth. Thank you, Happy everyone. Fourth. Can you log us? Are you there, Donna Souza? Yes, I am. Can you just stop the recording for us? Yep. Yeah.